Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight in grade five, we are working in module five and on lesson number 12. And that means that we are measuring to find the area of rectangles with fractional side lengths. So let's take a look at a couple of problems from tonight's homework. Not only am I, am I gonna go through a couple of problems, but I'm gonna actually show you the process of measuring on my own um, how I do those problems. So let's look at our first problem. Problem number one. Problem number one asks us to do the following. It says, Measure each rectangle to the nearest one-fourth inch with your ruler and label the dimensions. Use the area model to find the area. So the first thing I need to do is I need to get out my homework, get out my book, get out my ruler, make sure my ruler has not just uh, centimeters, which we've been using a lot lately, but also has inches, and I need to go ahead and measure that. So I'm gonna take a moment right now to go ahead and measure my uh, box. I want you to do the same thing to measure your rectangle. We'll meet back here in a second, and I'll show you what, um, what measurements I came up with. Hopefully your measurements came up with the same thing. Let's hold on a sec. I'll give you a few seconds to go ahead and pause the video, and then go ahead and take your measurements. Okay, we're back. And I've gone ahead and done my measurements. I'm gonna show you those measurements up here in the upper right hand corner. The first thing I did is I laid down my ruler and I made sure that my zero mark lined up exactly with the left hand edge of my rectangle. Cause I'm gonna measure this length right here and I need to start that right at zero. And when I laid down my ruler on the inches side, I saw that it measured at least one, at least two, and it came very close to two and one fourth inches. You can see my pen pointed to that spot, right? It's just a little bit shorter than two and one fourth, but I noticed in the directions it said, measure each rectangle to the nearest one fourth inch, and the, the fourth of an inch that we are closest to at this right edge of this rectangle is two and one fourth inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and label the length of this as two and one fourth inches. Um, let's see. Oh, you guys don't know that mark yet, so let's do this one. Awesome. Two and one fourth inches. Then I went ahead and I tried to marry, uh, tried to measure the width of my um, of my rectangle. So again, I laid down my ruler this way. I laid down that zero mark so that it was right at the top of my rectangle, and then I looked to see how far down I got to get to the bottom of my rectangle. And this time it was exactly on, that looks like three fourths of an inch. Not a full inch, which is down here, not a half inch, which is here, but right in between three fourths of an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and write down here that this was three fourths of an inch wide, right there. And now I've got enough information to solve using my area model. Let's see how I would do that. Um, let's see, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna actually take my eraser here, I'm going to go ahead and erase this section right here. I'll blot that out. I'm going to go ahead and draw in, let's see, my area model. So this was two and one fourth inches. So I'm going to say that's like two inches here and one fourth inches here. And that kind of makes my area model a little clearer, right? So let's go ahead and see. Two inches times three-fourths of an inch. Two times three-fourths, let's see, that would be two times three is six-fourths, and six-fourths is the same as one and a half. So that's one and a half square inches. Awesome. And on this other one, let's see, we've got one-fourth of an inch times three-fourths of an inch, so that's one times three. Let's see, one times three is three and four times four is 16. So that's three sixteenths of an inch, of a square inch, oops, square inch right here. Awesome. And now we just need to add those two pieces together. So let's see, I'll put that here below. We have one and one half plus three sixteenths. And three sixteenths, let's see, oh, so I could rewrite my one and a one half as one and eight sixteenths plus three sixteenths. And now we have like units, sixteenths and sixteenths, and we can go ahead and add that. And eight sixteenths plus three sixteenths would be eleven sixteenths. We have one and eleven sixteenths inches squared. So that's gonna be my sense. That would be my sense if this were a story problem, but since this isn't a story problem, I think that's just my answer. That one and eleven sixteenths squared inches is my answer. Awesome. Well, I hope your measurements go as well as mine did. Check out your accuracy. Make sure you're putting down your ruler right at the edge of the line you're trying to measure. And then once you've got that, you can go ahead and fill out your, uh, your area model uh, and figure out your areas. Awesome. Let's take a look at another problem. Problem number two, I'm going to do B again. 
Problem number two asks us to find the area of rectangles with the following dimensions. Explain your thinking using the area model. This time they don't draw out the box, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to draw out our rectangle. And let's see, I'm given the two measures, two and one half feet by one and one quarter feet. So let's see, two and one half. I want to measure that like this. I'll say this is the two feet, and this is that extra half foot right there. So we'll divide the whole part from our fractional part. And then let's do the same thing on the other side of our area model. Let's see, the one foot would be here, one foot, and then the one fourth of a foot would be right here. And at that point, we've laid out our rectangle, right? This is one and one fourth feet in this direction, just like this is, and this is two and one half feet like this, in this direction, like that part. So pause the video for a second if you want and see if you can figure out how we would do this multiplication now that we've got our area model laid out. Okay, I'm going to multiply the sides of each of these rectangles. This re rectangle right here is one foot wide by two feet long, and one foot times two feet is two feet. Let's see, another section over here would be this one. This one is one foot long here, this measurement, by one half of a foot this way. So one times a half is just, oh, it's a half. Awesome. Next part, let's see, how about this part right here? Well, it's two feet long in this direction, and it's just one-fourth of a foot long in this direction. So what is one-fourth of two feet? Let's see, I guess that would be two divided by four, or one-half, one-half, right? Two times one-fourth would be two-fourths, or one-half. Yep, that would work. And then finally, this rectangle right here is one-fourth of a foot tall, and one-half of a foot wide, and one-fourth times one-half would be, let's see, one-eighth, one-eighth of a foot. So really now we need, all we need to do is add up our fractional parts. We have two plus one-half plus one-half plus one-eighth. Oh, and I'm noticing right away that those two halves would make a whole. We've got this other part that's a whole, and we've got this fractional part. So let's see, I think I can even do a better job than that. Let's see, let's make these into a whole, and then we'll combine the, the whole parts. Two plus one is three plus our one-eighth, three and one-eighth. And our units, let's see, we had feet on this direction and feet in this direction. That must mean we have square feet when we figure out the area. So this would be feet squared, three and one-eighths feet squared. Awesome. Well, I hope you were successful in laying out your area model using your fractional measurements. Um, in the real world, we always end up with fractional measurements, almost all the time. I mean, it's nice for us to get whole number measurements, but in the real world of construction and makerspace um, and crafts and cooking and everything else, inevitably we come up with fractional measurements. So we have to know how to handle those. And this model is one way for us to lay those out so that we're making sure that we multiply um, every part of one side with every part of another side when we're coming up with our area. After that, it's just a matter of doing our math right here and figuring out our units, and we're done. So thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kong Has Problems. I'll see you again next time. Sorry for the darking dog. Bye-bye.